We see a lot of bikes here on GCN and we are lucky enough to ride most of them. And then we're glad that we don't have to ride some others. Occasionally though, we see a bike roll through our doors that has the potential to change history. In no particular order, here is a list of some bikes and some companies that we think have changed the cycling world. First up, the giant TCR. Probably one of the most important design changes in cycling history was the shift from a classical horizontal top tube to a sloping one, eliminating the need for 10 different bike sizes. With the giant TCR, now a rider could choose between small, medium and large, a choice we all take for granted these days. Father of the design, Mike Burrows decided it was more sensible to get a bespoke fit through component adjustment rather than from unique frame builds. As such, mountain bike-esque frame geometry made it to the road, with rapid adoption following high-profile successes with the Spanish team Once. Open Up, slated as being the modern instigator of gravel riding, Open's first model, the Up, or the UP, set the standard for performing gravel bikes with drop chainstays and multiple wheel size options. What did this mean? Well, shorter, more agile chainstays, giving a more lively feel to the ride, with the added ability to ride bigger rubber if you desired. Since his iteration, many brands have jumped to this setup. Whether you love it or hate it, gravel is definitely here to stay. Brompton. Some might argue the Brompton isn't a true road bike. It certainly has though changed the world of cycling. Designed and built in London, the Brompton began life way back in 1975 as a sketch. First prototypes are a far cry from the neat machine that we know today, but it was a massive jump forward in the field of foldable bikes. Since the 90s, Brompton has taken the world by storm. It's not the lightest folding bike, and it's not the smallest folding bike either, nor is it the fastest, but it combines all of these aspects to make it the most usable and the best designed folding bike out there. Many people have changed their work and life habits because of this bike, combining it with rail travel, living outside of town, storing it under a desk in an office that otherwise doesn't have space for bikes, and likewise, keeping it at home, nestled in the corner. Eddie Merckx's hour record bike in the pursuit of perfection for his hour record attempt back in 1972, Merckx enlisted the experience of Conago. With a combination of the finest components, custom engineered pieces, and a lot of drilling, they came up with a bicycle a touch shy of 5.5 kilos, which I think is incredibly impressive, even by today's standards, and then pushing the limits of what was possible with materials at the time. Chinelli Laser, the beginning of aero. Before the world of shaving your legs for watts, there was this, the first bike designed with aerodynamics specifically in mind. It was a burgeoning technology back in the 1980s, which Alberto Colombo based his radical design on. Lugless, teardrop shaped in profile and heavily labor intensive. It was one of the most expensive bikes to be ever produced. Parts of your modern aero bike you can thank Colombo for include brake fairings, aero tube profiles, and that compact front end. The Cervelo Soloist, taking cues from Cinelli's laser straight to the 21st century. The Soloist was the first recognizable aero bike in the field, bringing tube design and manufacture in-house for the first time, and with a big brand name too. Cervelo made developments in stiffness and aerodynamics that others were only dreaming of. It's a modern classic in my mind, and it was released only back in 2002, bringing such things as internal cable routing to the mass market, something hated by most mechanics, but loved by those who appreciate clean lines and marginal gains. Conago Titanio Bititan somewhat stifled the rules of the UCI. Ernesto Conago hit peak innovation in the mid 90s with the advent of new materials to play with. The Titanio Bititan is such an example of the designer's repertoire, which was forbidden from racing due to its departure from a traditional front triangle, amongst other things. It was pushing the boundaries of materials design in the industry dominated by steel and aluminium, leading the way that has ultimately ended up with the carbon road machines that we're used to seeing today. Here's an interesting one, Graham Obrey's Old Faithful. Combining all of these attempts at aerodynamic efficiency that troubled the UCI, none have tried harder and persisted as ferociously as Graham Obrey. Famed for his hour record back in 1993 on his homemade machine, Aubrey went beyond materials to save seconds. By adopting the now infamous tuck, banned by the UCI, he developed the Superman, again with the arms out front, also banned by the UCI, fearful that cycling advances were coming from technology rather than from human endeavor. Regardless of this, Aubrey highlighted the ability of the human body to be the most effective measurement of aerodynamic improvement. 
Canyon. No cycling brand in recent years has managed to turn the market on its head quite as significantly as Canyon. Before the German Behemoth came to fruition in 2001, having previously been a supplier, you'd be hard pressed to buy a bike without visiting a shop, even if it were just to try something on for size. Now you can go through the entire process of fit, spec and ordering on Canyon's website. By taking this model, Canyon no longer needed to enter the retail sphere, allowing them to avoid markup costs associated with distributors and physical retail space. Okay, so you can't go and look at a Canyon unless you actually visit their factory in Koblenz on the shores of the Rhine. It's a contentious topic as consumers focus more on digital purchases and high street shops start to struggle to keep up. Do you think that we've missed any bikes that may have changed the world of cycling? Let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to GCN if you want to see more content like this and some stuff from us actually on bikes outside.